Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCDUniverse.com. Uh, today I'm going to show you a little impressions mini review uh, video. It, it's primarily going to be a comparison though between uh, the three console releases of the Shadowrun game. Um, they're all very different. Uh, the most recent one is the 360 version. We're going to start off now with the Genesis title. So here we go. I'm just going to start a new game just to show you a little bit of it because I don't want to load something up and ruin anything for anyone. Okay, so right off the bat you get a, a samurai, a decker, which is like a hacker, and a shaman. Um, let's go with the samurai. So if no one, if, if you don't really know what Shadowrun is, um, it's Blade Runner meets Dungeons and Dragons. So it's the future, um, magic has, has been uh, reintroduced or has come back into the world in the future, but it's like, you know, people have modifications and robot parts and hacking into systems like the Matrix and logging in and, you know, stealing data from one another and doing runs for big corporations to murder people and steal things from one another. So it's, um, it's a mix between two very different universes that worked out really well. It started off as a pen and paper RPG, and then it went into a trading card game, a Genesis game, a Super Nintendo game, a 360 title in the past couple of years, and uh, I'll go more into at the end of the video what else they're doing in terms of uh, with the license or with the name. Okay, so this is you. Let's uh, wave this to blur. There we go. So, this game has some speech in it. It's, you know, not speech in terms of... Uh, you won't hear any speech, but it's a it's a it's a role-playing game. It's top-down. It has a a lot more action, I would say, than the Super Nintendo version, or well, maybe not. Maybe not action, but it seems more action-oriented. Okay, so the beginning of this game, you're looking to pick up your brother's stuff because he got killed, and um, the hotel manager is telling you that you owe money for the room and you can't pick up this stuff until you uh, pay for it. So, I would say the Super Nintendo title has more atmosphere, um, while this game I think is kind of a um, less linear, you have to follow a path to, to, do, the, to do the main story, but the um, you can kind of do what you want when you want, grind a little bit, upgrade characters, um, get new people in your party. I mean, you could do that stuff in the Super Nintendo version, but you kind of have to follow the, the the straight and narrow with that one. With this one, you can go around and do what you want a little more, and I think there's a little more customization in that regard, but the Super Nintendo one's excellent as well, and I'll show you that one next. So, let's kick this off a little bit. Okay, so... This is kind of what the normal bars or like the CD bars look like that you're going to meet a, uh, a, J a Mr. Johnson in. Mr. Johnson's are the kind of guys that hire either like local shadow runners to uh, do jobs and stuff for money. I always thought this was funny. An old man flashes his gums at you. His foul breath is air freshener compared to the stench of his withered body. I just thought it was weird. Oh, that wasn't the Johnson. Maybe this is him. So this is one of the guys you can hire. If you go to a bar, usually there's uh, there's characters you can hire. Is this it? Maybe this is it. The jump house. Yeah, this is it. So usually the Mr. Johnson are sitting in the corner. So sometimes it's um, picking something up and delivering it safely. Sometimes it's killing someone. Um, the story gets really in depth, and uh, there's a lot of little twists and turns. Thirty-five dollars. Wow. I 
think I have money on me, but... I don't. Okay. I thought I might have started with some money, but... So now you can go into here, you can um, switch weapons, you can, you get magic later on to heal and do, you know, if you're a shaman more so. But I think any every character kind of has a little bit of everything. <clears throat> you can do uh, spells and shoot fireballs and shit. Cyberware is when you implant things into your body, like you can get, uh, like wolverine claws, you can get thermal implants to have, like, uh, armor inside you. Uh, you can upgrade your attributes and skills when you get karma. Karma is like the experience points of the game. And let's clip, so that's just bullets. Um, let's see what else, what else? You know, you can switch what items you have on you and all that. And there's a pocket secretary which you can save and um, check what you have to do. So go to the Hollywood Correctional Facilities and the Redmond Barons. A contact will give you a package, take it to the Weapon Emporium in Redmond. It will be paid upon safe delivery. Okay. So, let's go to the Redmond Barons first. Um, the way to get around in this game is you have to use a cab. Oh, I guess I am in the Redmond Barons. I didn't. I forgot. I oh, haven't played this game in a long time. Now these guys are following me. Oh, I died. Okay. As you can see, it's kind of easy to die from from the get-go. You have to, uh, you know, really build up your character. I don't remember where the correction facility is. I picked up something there. I don't think this is it. This is like someone's hangout. No. So the game starts off with, um, you know, you looking for what happened to your brother and why he died and such. It ends up going to this big story. You can kind of come out of different ways. You can hire people to come with you or just take the whole thing solo, which is much harder. Here, the Hollywood Correctional Center. Uh, he hands you a package and he walks away. Okay. So now we have to go. Sorry about the camera blurring. I can't really control that. Yeah, it's called get a get a capture card, Mike. Is this is the Aries. Here we go. So, takes a look over the package, takes it, and hands you the money. So, let's see how much money do I have at this point? Fifty-three dollars. So I need to to keep doing runs to uh, obtain that two fifty to obviously buy back my brother's stuff. The, the mystery kind of unravels. Uh, I'm not going to show you a ton of each of the games. I just wanted to kind of touch upon them, so I'm probably going to stop here with the Genesis version at least. Um, the mystery unravels. The music's pretty good. The gameplay's awesome. Once you get stronger and you're able to have like a team and hack, you can hack into things. Uh, I'm not showing you that because I'm not further along, but um, you can hack into things and you go into like this virtual reality type, type. Uh, Actually, wait. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is me loading one of my games up with one of my teams. You can switch characters, and each person, you know, has different attributes and better skills. Um, this is probably near the end of the game, or, or I would say might be the last level. Um, different things, you know, implement or change different stuff in the game. So, if you call a taxi, I think I'm part of this gang that runs the taxi business. So... It's free because I'm part of the gang that runs the cabs. So there's little like things like that that really um, put variation into the game. Okay, 
let me let me just see if I can hack into something. Okay. This is just a random hack I'm gonna go into. Just to show you what it's like. So you pick what you want to use. Um, attack. Okay. So this is what the now the Matrix and the Genesis version is actually much better than the Super Nintendo one. This one has some uh, depth to it, and it's actually like a mini game almost. The but a really good mini game. The Super Nintendo one is more of a uh, mind sweeper. Like you have to pick out where you want to step and where you don't want to step, and see how many like bombs or or they're called black ices or ices as you see in the corner ices are around you. So the Genesis version is much better than the Matrix. I think overall. The atmosphere is better in the Super Nintendo one, um, probably the graphics a little bit too, but the Genesis one was a little more accessible and fun and not as, I would say not as difficult. So you're going to want to attack the ice and then you, you know, log into the system and now you pick where you want to go, there's only one place to go right now, but there's different skills you can put in your cyber deck to use while you're fighting these, uh, these different, uh, ices and viruses in, in the system to to gather data and stuff and then you can sell the data or sometimes uh, uh, Johnson will put you on a run to to capture data and you get paid for it so you can also I think get hurt or die if you die in the matrix so this is before the movie came out so this 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 was a uh, so you download this file and now you can go sell it so that's, that's I just wanted to touch upon the uh, the Genesis version a little bit and show you what it was like. It's a great game, I'm not doing it justice. If you haven't played it, definitely check it out. Um, both versions are great in their own way. This one's more of a top-down shooter with RPG elements. The Super Nintendo one, here we go. It's, I'm gonna show you right now. It's a uh, more of a point-and-click game, but there is shooting involved. Now this seems to be the one that more people uh, you know, uh, knew about or played. So let's start a new game. I'll just show you a couple minutes of it. I'm gonna say this one has a little more charm to it. The music's really good. I don't know if that's because of the uh, the FX chip being better on the Super Nintendo. This was the one I played first that I had said in my last video. A, a neighbor of mine had given me a copy before he moved. You have to do a lot of talking in this. Um, you have to ask people certain questions. So there's you. You just uh, you got killed and you end up in the morgue, but then you get resurrected, and that's how the game starts. See, it's point and click. Use a little hand. So look at the slab you're on. Well, there you go. Examine. There's a lot of examining and talking, and then you get keywords, and you have to talk to people and say certain things or do certain things for them to give you those keywords. And if you tell them the right keyword they'll open up another keyword for you to use and that will you know, advance the storyline plot. So, something fell out. Pick up. And now over here is the scalpel. Exciting in this one. This one has a, like a health pack or something. Yeah, there you go. So you go into this menu, you can um, you also get karma in this. It's called the same thing. The money's called Nuyen, by the way, and N, N U Y E N in each uh, Shadowrun game. So you can go in and check your items. Um, you get spells later on. And as I said, the cyber, this, the uh, the Matrix is Minesweeper. Like you, you detect how many things are around you, and then you have to try and like d disable them or walk over what you what you think uh, doesn't have something on it. See, yeah, items, magic, armor. You can upgrade all your, you know your skills and stuff. These guys are gonna scream. This is pretty funny. It's, you know, a dead body walked out. And it's kind of creepy. When I was about like 11 or 10, and this, and I played this. I mean, I thought the atmosphere was great. So see, if you look, that word Hitman in the in the bottom right of the top box, 
um, is, is bold. That's a, that's a, uh, a keyword that you need to, they want you dead, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes they'll open more conversations and then they'll just keep repeating themselves. So if you follow this guy, Weapon. Now let's equip that before I get raped. You don't run out of bullets, which is good. It's weird playing this now because a friend and I just beat it, and uh, you know, at the end of the game, you have crazy weapons and you shoot really fast and all this stuff. Examine his body. So it's very, very detailed. The Genesis one isn't as detailed, but it's, I'd say it's a little more accessible. And um, I don't know. I, I liked, I liked some of the customization in the Genesis one. I like that you had a little more control. With this, it's like you have a linear path. You have to follow it. You have to do it to complete the game. And it was pretty difficult. They're both kind of difficult in their own way, I guess. So let's examine this guy's body. Nothing special. Now you go into here. Armor. Leather jacket, use, and uh, you got a naval leather jacket and a weapon. Now this is one of the main characters in the game, or one of his minions actually. Dog controls your destiny. So um, yeah, you have to find out who killed you. Um, why did it hit out on you? It becomes this much bigger plot. You talk to all different types of people. You can hire people to come with you. Uh, I would say they're probably not as... Uh, people just randomly shoot at you while you're walking down the street. I would say they're not as um, useful in this, maybe, as the Genesis version, but... And it's kind of... This one has more, like, puzzle elements to it, because, like... You have to go over here, open this gate, and then this dog runs out, he drops something, you have to pick it up and then use it later on, so there's a lot of like, you know, finding items and stuff, but the Genesis version doesn't have that as much, or I don't think at all, really. bad guys and let's see if I can kill them. And just like in the Genesis version, I know I didn't go into this before, but you get a uh, kind of like a, a hotel room you can go into, upgrade your character, or, uh, heal. There's always been the argument of what game is more uh, truthful to the pen and paper roots. Door is locked. I thought I had a, you get a key, I know you get a key at one point. I forget where you have to go. We haven't, I haven't played this in so long. But you get a key and you go into your apartment and the game kind of kicks off. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of that um, Super Nintendo version. And uh, now I'm going to show you the 360 title. So here's the 360 version of Shadowrun. Uh, you have a choice between Elf, Human, Troll, and uh, Dwarf. Each of them have different abilities. Health is higher, Essence is higher for Magic. They run quicker, their strength is harder, you know, or better. Um, you start off with a little more money with the Human, but he's all around, you know. He's an all around character while this guy's faster but dies quicker, that type of stuff. I'm a fan of the Troll, so let's, let's pick the Troll. Um, people lambaste this game because they did not like that it went from a top-down RPG and a you know isometric view RPG on the Super Nintendo to a first-person shooter. 
Um, they also didn't like that it's more like, it seemed a little less cyberpunkish and a little more, uh, I guess, Native American, for lack of a better term. It's kind of like, uh, it's always had this, this, uh, th this parts of the Shadowrun universe that deal with the Native American aspect mixed with cyberpunk, but I think this might have taken it a step further. Try this again. That being said, even though this game got lambasted, I think it still holds up. My friends and I loved this game. We still do. We this is the first person shooter that like did it for us on the 360. We're not Call of Duty fans or military shooter fans, so this really was great and it still is, we still play it all the time. My friend even bought the PC version because this is one of the few 360 titles that is cross-platform, so you're able to uh, play this on PC and Xbox together and talk to one another. So, at the main menu you can buy tech for your character to do different things. Um, let's get some magic going. Weapons, shotguns, rocket launchers. Let's get a rocket launcher, see how that goes. So, I died already. So now your body stays there. Let's show you a little bit of the gameplay from other people. Your body stays there until someone resurrects you. You can go on the mic and start screaming, or you can push the D-pad up or whatever, and it, it'll uh, tell people what you need. Like right now, I'm pushing up and saying I need a res. So I'm on the blue team, so anyone in red is my enemy. Um, there's different game modes. There's death matches. There's like a capture the flag where you have to collect that artifact that you see down there. Maybe you can see it. And you can pick that up and bring it to the other base and you get a point. Some people kind of frown upon that. They're like, oh, you captured it, or we're supposed to kill each other. You, don't, you know, because if everyone dies, the game ends. Um, actually, this guy has a glider, so he flies around. I'm dead on the floor, so... If they destroy your body and start smacking it and shooting it and shit, then it disappears and then you can't get resurrected. But there's all kinds of spells. There's resurrection, there's... You could summon, like, um, these, like, fiery demon things that are very slow, but very strong. Um, this guy just threw up what is called a tree of health. I can't really show you. Oh, I'm rezzed, all right. A tree of health is like um, that thing right there. You can you can stand next to it and get your health back. Um, I'm using something now that makes me invisible, except if they have this one spell. You can also push up or uh, the D-pad or whatever to alert people as to what, uh... To alert people as to who's... who's near you or whatever. You know, this guy can't attack me because I'm invisible. I died. So that's it. Once you die twice, your body's gone. Um, there's, like, there's definitely an element of strategy. You definitely need teamwork. I would say you definitely need, you know, an elf who, who's better with the magic, and you need a troll who's more of like a tank with like miniguns and shit. The humans, like I said, are all around. The elves heal uh, quicker. Like if you stay still, the elves will heal themselves. Well, I think no one else does that. The dwarves can't get headshots done to them. I don't understand that, but they can. If you shoot them in the head, it doesn't work right away. You have to shoot them a couple times where everyone else gets headshot once. So there's little elements of strategy. There's one of those minions I was talking about before that you can resurrect to help you kill people. Um, there's definitely a lot of strategy to it. People just just hated it. I guess they, they expected a, an RPG, like a Fallout type RPG with the Shadowrun universe, and instead they got a first person shooter. And in a, in a, in a, a time where first person shooters are, have been done to death, people are just disappointed. But it's a great game. Don't let it you know, dissuade you. It's, uh, it's
It's like five bucks. You can pick up a for like five bucks. And it still has a good community. I mean, yeah, there's only three games or something going on right now, but it's still a good, big community. Um, and there's always people playing. I've never once been into a game where no one's playing. Let's go to tech. Let's do uh, smart link. Smart link helps you aim better. I think does more damage. that guy. Kill that guy. Oh shit. So actually, it, it's awesome. I mean, it's you really gotta work together and back each other up. Throw up trees of health and uh, throw up trees, trees of health or throw up, uh, you know, resurrect people. Can team kill, which is stupid. Sometimes people just team kill and have like dicks and they don't actually play the game, obviously. Damn it. So this guy over here is dead that's on my team. Artifact return. Two enemies, right You can oh you can also uh disappear and reappear and stuff and go through walls and stuff. If you heard that, the guy said I had no clue, so that was good. Real, real nice. I have no clue. I've probably been playing this game since release. They frown upon you, Captain, the artifact, but I really don't give a shit. So there you go, you get the, uh, the gist of it. It's an awesome game, and uh, I definitely think you should give it a shot. If you, if you like first-person shooters with like a little, you know, different uh, stuff to it, it's, it's, it's unique. It's got magic, it's got cyberpunk, you can upgrade your characters. It's kind of like Counter-Strike, each, uh... Oh, great. So they're my, I'm getting team killed because I captured the flag. That's real nice. So, uh... See, that's what I said. It's the only thing. You always get these people that think they, you know, since it's in the game and and uh, they don't like it, that you're, you're doing something they don't like, they'll kill you. So that's pretty, uh, pretty stupid. But either way, the game's really good. Don't let that retard dissuade you. Okay, well, that's it. It's Vampire Mike from SegaCDUniverse.com. Oh, wait, actually, I wanted to tell you guys something else. I just remembered. Um, the, uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you was... There's, in the works right now, two Shadowrun games uh, that just got kickstarted. One is Shadowrun Returns, I believe it's called, and that's supposed to be like a um, RPG, like a, I think almost like an open world RPG, sort of like, uh, I guess like the Fallout games, but like, you know, newer and stuff. And there's another one that I, kick, I put in for on the Kickstarter. It's uh, Shadowrun Online, and that one is it's like a Diablo-esque online MMO. Uh, for PC and Linux and Mac and stuff. I think they said it's going to run browser-based, but also client-based. Um, that looks really cool from the little tech demos and stuff I've seen. So if you like the universe, there's new stuff rolling out. Um, and there's uh, old stuff, too, if you want to play the pen and paper game. So thanks for checking it out. And uh, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCityUniverse.com. I hope you liked uh, the stuff I showed you and I opened your eyes to some new things. Be good, guys.